guys. Um, so welcome. Fireside stretches on the agenda for tonight. I hope you have a water with you. It's just going to be a, a very gentle 10 minute segment. And, um, you know, I have to admit and confess to you all that yesterday's uh, session with the moon salutations was a, a challenging one and sort of a hard one to start with. Today's session is going to be a lot more restorative. We're going to be focusing on um, opening up the hips and hamstrings, especially for you runners, but really for everyone um, because hips and hamstrings with all the sitting that we do are typically really tight. Um, before we actually start with the stretches, I just want to read to you a little um, segment from the book, from my book. Um, and hopefully you all signed up for my e-news and got this first chapter anyway. If you haven't already, you can head to my website um, and just sign up for the e-news and you'll automatically get a, a cha um, the chapter of the book sent to you. Um, but I just wanted to read this um, little segment about willpower, chill power, because um, I know that a lot of people really think that they're not good at yoga. I know so many tight, athletic people, and they say to me, I can't do yoga because I'm tight. And I say, you're exactly the person who should be doing yoga. And they say, but I'm not good at it. And I say, there's no such thing as not being good at yoga. There's, there's no such thing as being bad at yoga. So, um, so real quick, just the um, little definition of willpower and chill power. And so we already know what willpower is. It's the strength of purpose, self-control, it's the drive to do something challenging and gets out, get yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, despite obstacles, you do hard things, you focus, you have courage, you persevere. That's all willpower, right? And all of you know something about that and have done some hard things, I'm sure, in your lives. Chill power is the opposite of that in many ways. Um, the ability to let go and be at peace with what is to consciously choose to relax and to surrender into a state of calm in order to recharge and rebuild. And it goes on with um, a longer definition. But the reason I wanted to start with that is because with the stretches that we do or the balancing poses like we did yesterday with balancing half moon, which is a tough one, um, chill power, acceptance. Your, tip, your hips might be tight, that's okay. Accept it and try not to judge and try not to push for sure and just be at peace with it, okay? So chill power off the mat as well as on the mat. All right, so let's go ahead and begin. Go ahead and make your way to child's pose. So settle your hips back onto your heels and let your forehead drop down onto your mat and take a deep breath in and out through your nose and just let your shoulders soften and let any tension that you're holding from the day relax and let that go. On your next inhale, shift forward to your hands and knees. You're gonna curl your toes and lift yourself up into downward facing dog. And if you'd like to, just bend your left knee and drop your right heel so you get that good calf of Achilles stretch. And switch to the same thing the other side. So bend the right knee, drop the left heel and just continue to pedal out right and left so you get that good stretch of the calves and the ankles. And we're just gonna start with a half vinyasa just to open up the back. So you'll inhale, draw to plank, and like all of our poses, you wanna align your um, joints. So elbows, shoulders, wrists, all in one line. You can bend your knees if you wanna modify. Otherwise, with straight legs, go ahead and lower all the way down. And then we're gonna inhale into a cobra and open up the chest, slide the shoulders back and down, and then curl the toes, push back, downward facing dog. And then from here, we're gonna come into pigeon stretch. So pigeon are always hip openers. So you're just gonna bring your right knee to your right wrist. You're gonna point your left toes and slide your left foot as far back as you can. And then just forearms come down to the floor. So hips are super tight for a lot of people, especially if you're athletic. So what tends to happen when the muscle group is tight is that you will grip and you will tense. So what I want you to consciously try to do is what I was describing earlier when I was reading to you is access that chill power, relax, surrender, soften, and try to let go of the gripping, let go of the tension. Let's take three deep breaths in and out through the nose. If you want to, you can slide your elbows out wide and drop your forehead to rest down onto your hands, 
Okay, if that doesn't feel comfortable for you, you can also stack your fists on top of each other and rest your forehead there, okay? One more really deep breath in and out through the nose. And again, with the exhale, try to just really soften, really relax, try to settle in and surrender into the stretch. And then we're gonna go ahead and come up from there and come into a twist. So all I want you to do is put your right hand down, drop your right hip, and swing your left foot around. So from here, your left foot's outside of your right knee and your right hand's gonna come outside of your knee as well. And I want you to sit up as tall as you can and then go ahead and twist and look over your left shoulder. And you're gonna wring out your spine a little bit and twist through your spine, only go as far as feels comfortable for you. But if you want an extra hip stretch, you'll take your right hand outside of your left knee and pull that knee a little closer to your right shoulder and that's gonna get into that left hip a little bit. Okay, with your inhale, sit up even taller and with your exhale, twist a little bit further. And then go ahead and rotate out of that and just cross that left leg in front of the right leg. Okay, so you're just sitting with cross legs. And again, just accept where you are. If you're not going as far, that's all good. You're gonna bring your hands out in front of you and just walk your hands as far forward as you can. And so this is double pigeon, a variation of double pigeon. Walking your hands far forward, let your head drop down between your arms. Now this will get into both hips, maybe one more into the other, depending on where you're feeling really tight. So really try to breathe deep again and try to soften the shoulders and just settle down into that hip stretch. And let's take three more breaths here in and out through the nose. And if you can walk your fingertips even further away, go ahead and do that. Let all the tension from the day just melt away with your exhale. And then let's go ahead and slowly come up from that. And we're gonna do butterfly stretch next with just groin inner thigh. So you're gonna bring the bottoms of the feet together to touch. You can grab onto your ankles and the further that the feet are close to you, closer to the groin, the deeper the stretch will be. So if you want a less intense stretch, slide the feet a little further away from you. You're gonna grab onto your ankles and press your elbows into the creases of your knees, but you don't wanna be forceful it. with it. You just wanna gently guide the knees a little further open. And then you can go ahead and just drop your chin to your chest and take three breaths there. This is butterfly stretch for groin, inner thigh. One more deep breath in and out through the nose. And then go ahead and come up and let's come into a straddle stretch. You're gonna take your feet as wide as you comfortably can. Your hands can go up behind you. You're gonna give yourself a little push forward just so you come into a slightly deeper stretch. And then the hands can come out in front if that's okay from you. Um, if you're back sensitive, you can certainly support with your hands behind. Otherwise, just go ahead and walk forward. This is a great stretch for hamstrings, groin, and inner thigh. Don't force it. If you need to have your hands more straight, that's all good, but just make sure you're not holding tension in your shoulders. We certainly don't wanna create tension in the upper body. So take two more breaths there, in and out through your nose, and see if you can softly go deeper into the stretch as you exhale. Such a great way to unwind at the end of the day. Way better than watching the news, right? Way more relaxing than watching the news. Go ahead and come all the way up from that, and then you're just going to bend. I want you to take your hands under your knees, bend your knees so that your feet are flat, and then just rock your knees from side to side just to loosen up the hips and kind of um, create a little bit of blood flow. All right, we're going to repeat all that on the other side. So you can go ahead and make your way into downward facing dog, however is comfortable for you to get there. Spread your fingertips out wide, drop your heels, and then again, feel free to pedal the heels out right and left so you get that good stretch, the calves and the ankles. And then we're gonna go ahead and draw the left knee to the left wrist for pigeon on the left side. So you're gonna point your right toes and slide them back, and then you're feeling this in the left hip you can go ahead and bring your forearms down if that's comfortable for you. And by the way, let me just mention, if you're not feeling this a lot in your hips, and maybe your hips are more open, you can bring your left shin more forward, or your left foot more forward so that your shin is parallel to the front edge of your mat. The closer that the foot is back towards the groin, the less intense the stretch will be. So modify it so that it works for you, all right? But your right hip should be close to your left 
heel um, in general, all right? Aligning that. So you can spread your elbows out wide, drop your forehead down to rest onto your hands if that feels good for you. And again, just try to really incorporate that deep breathing and that mentally you're surrendering, you're softening, you're accepting, and that's the chill power. So yes, we're doing these 10 minute segments every day. 10 minutes really isn't that long of a period of time. It's the consistency that's the key. And what I really want you to acknowledge is carrying that chill power mindset off of your mat from your yoga poses into your day. All right, let's go ahead and support and go ahead and come up from that. And then we're gonna get that twist on the left side. You wanna bring your left hand down to the mat and release your left knee, or your left hip. And then your right foot's gonna swing around. And then we'll twist the other way. So you're gonna sit up as tall as you can and twist and look over your shoulder and get that nice rotation through the spine. And the more that you use this right hand to pull into your, sorry, your left hand to pull into your right knee and draw your right knee towards your left shoulder, the more you'll feel that in your right hip. But you want your spine to be like a spiral staircase, so straight from the crown of your head down through your tailbone, you certainly don't wanna be hunching, right? You wanna open up your posture. And then go ahead and come out from that. Let's come into that double pigeon variation. So the right shin's just gonna come out in front of the left, and then hands out in front of you, and then you just walk your hands as far forward as you comfortably can so that you feel that stretch through your hips. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, and just acknowledge and really notice how your body's feeling. So if we honor and listen to our body and the messages that it's sending to us, then we get in a lot less trouble over time. So as you're in these stretches, just really try to tune in to the messages that your body's just sending you. Take one more breath. And then go ahead and come slowly up. And we'll come into butterfly next. So you can uncross your legs, the bottoms of your feet to touch, elbows into the creases of the knees. Again, adjust your feet accordingly. So closer in or further out, depending on how it feels for you. And then very light, gentle pressure from your elbows into your knees so that you feel that deeper stretch. And you can just let your chin fall to your chest, relax any tension from your neck, and fold forward. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and sit up and come into that wide leg straddle stretch one more time. So again, as wide as the legs will comfortably go, give your hands um, a push from behind you so you can scoot yourself a little bit further forward and then hands out in front if that's okay with you, walking your hands a little further forward and then dropping down with the weight of the head. Let's take three deep breaths in and out through the nose. So the 10 minutes goes very fast. The 10 minute commitment on a daily practice, in a daily practice is what will really get the change over time. So these 10 minutes, you know, 10 days in a row, I'm hoping that you'll really feel a change in that, in that short period of time. It's a small commitment. I feel like 10 minutes, you know, we could, as long as we're checking out from our Instagram maybe or whatever, you can make more practical use of your time. And you can do all these stretches on the floor, by the way, if you really do have to have the TV on while you're doing it. Although if you unplug, it's so much more relaxing. Go ahead and support yourself. Come all the way up and then just cross your legs. And we're not gonna do Shavasana just yet. We're going to just uh, finish with a little bit of breath work and um, just uh, say goodnight from there. So you can bring your hands to heart center, sit up as tall as you can, bow your chin to your chest, and I'm gonna to read to you just one more thing from the book, which is the definition of Namaste. So typically if you go to a yoga class the instructor will finish with um, a greeting. Um, the word is namaste, and here's the definition of it. My soul honors your soul. I honor the place in you where the entire universe resides. I honor the light, love, truth, beauty, and peace that is within you because it is with, also within me. And in sharing these things, we are united we are the same and we are one. 
So typically I shorten that definition as the light within me honors and acknowledges the same light that is within you. Thank you so much for practicing your little short 10 minute vinyasa tonight. Have an awesome night. I would highly recommend an Epsom salt bath. That's what I'm gonna to do tonight. Really um, relaxes the muscles and helps to promote a sound sleep, especially with a little serenity oil or lavender oil. Great combination. Have a great night, you guys. Namaste. Luna slept the whole time. <laughs>